far from the arcade style brawlers you might be used to, Midnight Suns is a tactical take on the Marvel Universe, with all of your favorite heroes battling in turn based cinematic action. It can be a lot to get used to, especially if you're more used to playing like the Wolverine or the Hulk rather than a master strategist like Magneto or Doctor Doom. To that end, we put together some beginner tips to help you get started at Midnight Sun so you can take down Hydra in no time. Tony, come on. It's perfectly safe. That thing wakes up and takes a bite out of you. Don't blame me. If you played games like XCOM or even tactical RPGs like Divinity, Midnight Suns will feel very familiar to you. But for this video, we're going to assume that you're relatively new to the turn-based strategy genre. Combat in Midnight Suns has you taking tactical control over a squad of three heroes, who you'll select from your roster at the beginning of each mission. Each hero fits within a role from the classic trinity of tank, damage, and support playstyles. Damage heroes, like Blade and Spider-Man, also have subcategories specializing in either single target or area of effect damage respectively. Many heroes double dip into multiple roles, such as Captain Marvel, who can both tank and deal damage. Her knee strike draws enemies' attacks and increases her block equal to the damage dealt. And her binary state doubles her damage on basic and heroic abilities. When building your first teams, we recommend using a balance of a hero with damage mitigation abilities, a hero with high single target damage, or area of attack, and a healer or support hero. Great beginning choices for your team compositions are Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, and The Hunter. Captain Marvel can handle the front line and deal massive amounts of destruction. Spider-Man has great damage options for groups of enemies and has great value out of the environment. Surprisingly, the Hunter has excellent support capabilities and is able to heal their allies in a pinch. I owe you one. If you fully want to understand the hero's strengths and synergies fully, open their hero profile in the menu and go to the Show More button. Here you can get a fantastic breakdown of the hero and how they will fit into your team composition and some general tips. In a handful of missions, you'll be forced to use certain heroes. We highly recommend picking the remaining heroes to compensate for the required hero's weaknesses. For example, if you use Doctor Strange on a mission, who has great support capabilities but low health pool and doesn't deal a lot of damage, you'd want to complement him with a tank hero like Captain America and a damage dealer like Blade. Remember, every mission is different and requires strategy and planning according to the environment and enemy types. We have a more advanced tips video where you'll find other recommendations for different team combinations. Midnight Suns also incorporates some deck building elements. Before going out on your missions, you can customize your deck, and it's important to note you can only use 8 cards per hero and have a maximum of 2 of the same ability card. You can combine the same ability card to create a more powerful version with added effects. We recommend combining your cards as often as you can. When building your deck, you want a healthy balance of attack, skill, and heroic cards. Attack cards can damage enemies, but some have bonus effects such as knockback or stun. Skill cards are mainly support oriented, such as healing, boosting damage, and card drawing. Heroic cards are very special and have some of the strongest abilities in the game, but they require a unique resource. When playing certain attack and skill cards, they reward you with heroism. Heroism is a powerful resource that allows you to use heroic cards like Ghost Rider's Hell Ride, which deals insane amounts of damage to all enemies in the line or Captain Marvel's Photon Beam, which damages and taunts enemies. Note that heroism can be saved up between turns, so consider holding off on playing those cards until you're sure it's the right moment. Items can be an excellent get out of jail free card. They offer unique benefits such as Charm of Clarity, which gives you one extra redraw and doesn't cost a card to play. We recommend always keeping a stocked inventory of items. They are cheap and provide great utility in many different situations. The best items to purchase in the beginning are the Charm of Clarity, as mentioned before, the Agility Serum, which gives you one extra move, and the Battlefield Scanner, which lets you draw two cards for free. Always better to be prepared. From TV. Which one? Now, if everyone would just take a moment. In combat, you can use the environment to help turn the tide of battle. Using certain abilities can affect multiple enemies at once or make enemies collide with the environmental elements. Before executing any abilities, you can preview to see what will happen if you commit the ability. For instance, by using Ghost Rider's Lash, you can see the trajectory of the knockback and what kind of effects it will have if you execute the move. 
In this instance, you can combo the knockback of the lash onto an enemy by having them collide with the explosive barrel, thereby causing collateral damage to other enemies. Always use the environment to your advantage as it lets you set up some truly insane combos. Your time is coming. You can also use your heroism points on specific objects in the environment to perform unique abilities. You can use this tactic to quickly knock out enemies and reposition your heroes, and it doesn't cost a card play, only heroism points. If you have no heroic cards and excess heroism, these attacks are of great value for your turn. For example, in this situation, all the redraws have been used, there are no heroic cards in hand, however, the hunter can vault over the crate, finish off the enemy, and still have heroism points for the next turn. You can also knock back enemies into parts of the environment that don't appear to be significant. For example, the street light is not highlighted like the Hydra supply crate or the explosive barrel. If you preview the knockback on the enemy, you can see that you'll get extra damage by having the enemy collide with the street light. Some parts of the non-highlighted environment can deal more damage than others. For instance, having the enemy collide with the bollards instead of the street light does more damage. Make sure to see what part of the environment gives you the most value on the turn before executing your moves. You have earned this! Blade told me to mention your mother. Apparently, she's promiscuous. Like in other games, whether it's XCOM or Elden Ring, it's always beneficial to kill all the other minions first and then focus on the elites or bosses. The reason for this is if the enemy has a lot of units on the battlefield every turn, it gives them more chances to attack or apply debuff to your team. That being said, while the knee-jerk reaction might be to use your AoE abilities to kill as many minions and enemies as you can, we recommend you save your AoE attacks for groups of enemies that are not minions. Minions almost always die in one hit, so if you use your cards with a quick modifier, you'll thin their ranks and get the card refunded. For example, in this situation, it'd be very flashy and fun to use Magic heroic ability Gather on all these enemies, but can instead use the quick knockback to get the card play refunded and use their other heroic abilities to get more damage on the turn. When in doubt, never use heroic cards on minions, but instead use your quick cards to get the most value and kill the minions before eliminating the elites and supervillains. Wow, I'm glad you're on our side. You can sometimes get away with targeting more enemies than you think. For example, with Ghost Rider's Hell Ride in this situation, you may think you can only target these two enemies. But if you change the angle slightly, you can target the third by getting the edge of their hitbox. It may be awkward, but you can get a lot more bang for your buck. If you use your move on your turn, and the angle of your ability is slightly off, you can reposition your hero in a better angle. Midnight Suns is very liberal with how much you can reposition after you move, so you can almost always get into the position you intended if you made a mistake. The most important tactic in Midnight Suns is to make sure you're using every power and resource you can, each and every turn. In the earlier missions, you can get away with only using a few abilities and can afford having unused resources. As you progress, however, you will have to use every tool in your kit or you'll find yourself restarting the encounter. For instance, in a single turn, use all of your card plays, then use your quick cards to refund those card plays, employ both redraws to eliminate cards you can't use, and replace them with better ones. Spend your move to reposition your hero to avoid future damage, or to set up a position for a better attack. With all of this in mind, it's important to strategize all of these actions before executing them in order to get the most value per turn. But remember, there is no rush and you have unlimited time per turn. Even superheroes can get injured, which in this case means suffering lasting debuffs until they manage to heal off the field. Even a mild injury takes up card slots in your hand and forces you to use your redraws. So if one of your heroes becomes injured, do not use them on your next mission under any circumstances. Even if they're your favorite superhero or fit in your team composition perfectly, sending an injured hero into a mission will only compound into a snowball of pain and put your team in a disadvantaged position. The best way to avoid injuries is to prevent your hero from taking damage at low health percentages by healing them or negating damage. If you can't avoid someone getting injured though, they'll fully heal back at the Abbey after spending a mission on the bench. A pocket dimension in Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, suburbs. Nice. Welcome to the Abbey. Home of the Midnight Sun. 
Speaking of, after combat encounters, you'll have time to spend the Abbey, which is Midnight Sun's hub zone. Here you can perform many activities to upgrade your hero's roster and abilities. By leveling up your individual and team friendship levels, you unlock epic rewards and hero combo abilities, which are some of the most powerful moves in the whole game. Let's make this quick. So it's crucial to start leveling up your friendship levels early as possible to upgrade your team for harder late game missions. The best way to do this is by making sure you do the daily combat training and hangouts, whether that's playing video games with Spidey or watching a movie with Doctor Strange. Let's endeavor to meet again soon. When available, participate in the Abbey Clubs, give your hero compliments, and complete any favors they request. I am drawing inspiration from your positive attitude. There are also a few havens on the grounds in these locations that will greatly increase your friendship levels when used. Havens can only be used once, so plan strategically. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there, boss. See if Cordius was not on my afterlife bingo card. We highly recommend, in the beginning of the game, you explore the many areas of the Abbey that are scattered across the zones. From them, you can acquire a multitude of helpful resources, including Heroic Essence, which is used for upgrading crafting heroic abilities, the Cosmetic Currency Gloss, and the Arcane Knowledge that will increase your rewards from the Arcane Chess. Even interacting with random books and furniture pieces can award resources. Explore these zones to get a lot of loot that will help you at any stage of the game. Last but not least, pet or praise Charlie every day. This will grant you some extra arcane knowledge and increase your bond with them. This will allow you to get exclusive abilities to use in combat. Who is a good girl? Hopefully these tips will have you flying through missions with ease. For more on Midnight Suns, check out our advanced tips. For all your other Marvel needs, keep it here on IGN.